Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is David Patterson. I'm Vice President of Corporate Affairs for GM Canada. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of our President, Scott Bell, and Dan Durlis and Thorsten Kosek, who are really our, uh, our hosts here in this uh, magnificent facility um, as well. And uh, this is, of course, a place where we now manufacture auto parts. Um, and we've had a rapid transformation in that, but we are now making face masks as well uh, to keep us all safe. So speaking about safety, uh, uh, if there were to be an emergency, just uh, as part of our priority, because it's always our top priority, uh, you would just follow some of the staff out the door the same way as, the, as we came in. Um, I want to start with a, a few special welcomes um, to, uh, uh, to, to Ryan Turmel, our MP from uh, Whitby, who is joining us uh, here today. And um, as well, uh, my good friend, Jerry Diaz, who I'm going to ask just to say a few words to us as well before we uh, turn it over to the minister. So, Jerry. Well, good afternoon, and thank you, David. Today is an incredibly important day, and it's an important day of politicians of all stripes in the business community and working class people in the trade union movement to take a look at exactly what's happening here today. Because this is what happens when you have a vision. This is what happens when you have a commitment. This is what happens when you get the governments, the corporations, the unions working on behalf of Canadians. Because today is a special day as we watch the one millionth mask be made by our proud uniform members here in the GM facilities. So this is an incredibly important day for the manufacturing sector. Because we hear ongoing dialogue about the manufacturing sector and its role in the future of a stable economy. And I think about what would have happened to us as Canadians if it wasn't for the ability of the manufacturing sector and General Motors and others like GM that had the ability to change on a dime to build personal protective equipment that is so incredibly important for all of us. So today I take my hats off to those that made today possible. To the incredible uniform members that are making the masks from the commitment of General Motors and the government and of course Unifor to ensure that we understand our responsibility to Canadians. So the message to our members, job well done, and thank you. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Um, I just, uh, as Jerry's mentioned, today is really special to us. Uh, we're on trajectory here to be making upwards of a million masks a month now, and that's Canadians and their health that, uh, that we're talking about here. So we're very proud. I want to also give a special shout out to Ian Souter, uh, Derek Secura, and Julie Washburn. They were uh, on the team that really in just four weeks put this uh, incredible facility together a bunch of machinery that uh, was originally designed by General Motors in the United States, the sourcing of uh, materials, brought it here, had it on the docks, installed, and then hired and trained some 60 people on two shifts here. And we were able to bring people back to work uh, for this work. So we're extremely proud of them. And thank you, Ian. Thank you to the team, Derek, for, for all that incredible work. Um, uh, so we're on our, our trajectory towards a million masks a month, and we have some two very, very special guests. Uh, we have Honorable uh, Anita Anand, the Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Extremely pleased to, to have her. She is our customer, and uh, we thank her enormously for the great uh, support that we had as we put this together. And as well, the Honorable Navdeep Baines, Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry. Uh, great leader in Canada. Um, he is our advocate. Um, and uh, the work that these people have done to keep us safe, we all owe a great uh, debt of gratitude. So thank you so much for being here with us today. With that, I'm going to turn it over to the ministers to say a few words. Thank you uh, very much, uh, David. Um, and I want to uh, also acknowledge uh, my colleague Anita Anand and her leadership in using government's purchasing power to make significant uh, acquisitions on behalf of Canadians and frontline healthcare workers. I also want to acknowledge uh, my good friend, our good friend, uh, the local member of parliament, 
from Whitby, Ryan Turnbull, who uh, is a big champion of the automotive sector uh, and of the community here. And it's great to have him here with us today as well. And a thank you to GM Canada and uh, President Scott Bell. Uh, and of course, uh, David, for your friendship and your leadership uh, throughout all of this and stepping up in a big way. And I want to acknowledge the workers and the leadership, uh, Jerry Diaz and of course, Jason Gale uh, and Unifor uh, for coming together, as he mentioned, uh, in this remarkable endeavor. C'est un plaisir d'être ici à Oshawa. Nous faisons une mise à jour sur l'acquisition durable d'équipements de protection individuelle. L'usine de General Motors du Canada est le meilleur endroit pour le faire. And here's a company that approached our government early on and asking, how can we help? How can we make a difference? So we struck a deal with GM to provide 10 million face coverings over the next years. And I'm pleased to say that they have reached the production of one million face coverings. So congratulations and a job well done. So now GM Canada is not the only company. It's one of many, many companies that have stepped up in a big way. More than 6,000 Canadian firms have offered their expertise and capacity by retooling and scaling up or providing urgently needed go goods and services. And throughout this pandemic, I've been consistently impressed by Canadian entrepreneurs, scientists, and researchers stepping up in a big way and demonstrating how proud we are of Team Canada. At the outset of COVID-19 crisis, almost all of our personal protective equipment and other critical supplies were being purchased from abroad. And in just a few months through our Made in Canada initiative, and with the help of companies like General Motors and others, 40%, 40% of what we spend on these critical items is now sourced from Canadian companies. That is an incredible accomplishment of our ability to mobilize our strong industrial base that Jerry was talking about. So when times get tough, Canadians get things done. So with that said, let me give you this week's update. First off, I'm happy to announce that our government has signed a letter of intent with Winnipeg-based Precision ADM, which is using its 3D printing expertise to make nasal swabs of COVID-19 testing. These will be some of the first 3D printed nasal test swabs produced by a Canadian company. And with the current capacity of 120,000 swabs per week, Precision ADM is ramping up production to support Canadian testing and ensuring that we can produce this in-demand product right here at home. Our COVID-19 testing capacity received another boost as well with a new contract signed this week. Plastic Moore modifie sa production. Ils vont fabriquer des composantes de plastique pour les tests de dépistage de, de la COVID-19. And in addition to testing, companies have seen how hard they need to work and really look at innovative solutions to fight COVID-19. And I'm pleased to share that with you today that we've signed a contract with Oscar Sciences Canada coming from one of our Innovative Solutions Canada challenges. This Ottawa-based company has developed a touchless stethoscope system that allows medical professionals to listen to a patient's heart and lungs from a safe distance and allowing them to preserve personal protective equipment. So I'm constantly and consistently inspired by Canadian innovations like this. Our final update for today comes from Next Generation Manufacturing Supercluster, also known as NGEN. La Supergrappe a invité les entreprises à prospérer des méthodes robotiques de disinfection sans contact. Plusieurs utilisent les rayons ultraviolet. And the goal is to help stop the spread of the virus and provide safe environments for Canadians, whether it be office buildings, schools, restaurants, long-term care facilities, hospitals, or even environments like we are in today. Les cinq solutions de ce défi de disinfection par robot vont aider les travailleurs de première ligne à contrer la pandémie. 
For example, these sanitation robots will have the ability to make our workplaces and schools safer and allow workers and students to return to their jobs and studies. They will not only help reduce the spread of COVID-19, but they will also mitigate the impact of other potential surges, spikes, or waves that may break out in the future. So on behalf of the Government of Canada, I want to congratulate Advanced Intelligent Systems, ANK Robotics, Automotors, Crosswing, and Global DWS. Now let me conclude my remarks with a huge shout out and thank you to GM Canada and its workers, Unifor, and the rest of the companies and their partners who have been mentioned today. You are a tremendous reminder of Canadian innovation and compassion. Vous êtes des exemples parfaits de l'innovation et de la compassion canadienne. And your work promises to protect Canadians, protect our frontline healthcare workers, and allow us to return to our routine soon and embrace a gradual and safe reopening of our economy. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. I would now like to pass it to my colleague, Minister Anand. Well, thank you so much, Nav, and I'd like to thank you also for your leadership and your partnership in this effort that we are on together in terms of trying our hardest to make sure that frontline healthcare workers and beyond have the equipment that they need to keep Canadians safe. I'd like to thank David as well uh, for hosting us here today. You and your team are an inspiration to us. And Jerry's words are words that I would echo myself. Um, very inspirational words, David. Um, David, and thank you so much, Jerry, for, for everything. Uh, Ryan, so wonderful to see you, MP, from, uh, from just around the corner. It's just wonderful to have you here with us today. And I'd also like to give a big shout out to the workers at this plant. It's, it's unbelievable for me as the person who is uh, in charge of the procurement of PPE for the country to be in a plant, to be here today with you, to see exactly what you do on a day-to-day -day basis for Canadians has been unbelievably inspiring to me and I'm just so grateful to be here. So thank you so much. As Minister Baines mentioned, businesses right across the country, just like you here at GM, have stepped up and retooled to keep Canadians safe during this crisis. It's an unbelievable milestone that we are marking here today and I am so grateful to be with you to mark this milestone with you. Many of you have retooled and revamped um, manufacturing lines and established the production of PPE here in Ontario, here in Oshawa, and right across the country. This pan-Canadian effort towards the production of PPE is exemplified in the 53 contracts that we now have with Canadian manufacturers. The work of companies like GM to mobilize domestic PPE has been integral to our government's response and to the well-being of Canadians overall. Je suis aussi, comme mon ami Monsieur Baines, très très fier de travailler en partenariat avec l'équipe de GM ici en Oshawa, qui a intensifié ses efforts pour équiper nos travailleurs de première ligne et protéger les Canadiens. I'm so proud to be working in partnership with the team right here at GM in Oshawa. Thank you so much for stepping up to equip our frontline healthcare workers and to protect Canadians. You make our job so fulfilling. In just a few short months, you and businesses right across the country have set up entirely new production lines. That's incredible to lead to milestones like the one we are marking here today in terms of the production of one million face coverings. Thank you for showing us your plant today. Thank you for giving us a piece of what you experience every single day in the service of Canadians. Your efforts are testament to the way in which Canadians have come together to attack the virus that would otherwise be attacking us. Now I'd like to make an announcement in terms of our approach to the next 
phase of our government's response. As a result of our work together over the past four months, in partnership with industry, we have received hundreds of millions of pieces of PPE and medical equipment, with more on the way. We continue to build a strategic stock of these goods to ensure that Canada is prepared for any eventuality, inclu including a potential second wave. We're not out of the woods. We continue to place orders and to receive deliveries. But I want to spend a few moments talking about how our approach has evolved in terms of our government's response to COVID-19. You may recall back in March that I spoke frequently of how it was necessary to do procurement like it has never been done before. It was revolutionary, the way in which we mobilized from a government standpoint to ensure the production and the receipt of PPE domestically and internationally. This speed and agility was taking place in the most challenging of circumstances as countries from around the world rushed to acquire PPE. One of the steps that we took at that time was to initiate a call out of suppliers, both here at home and around the world, to come forward with the goods and services we need. We received over 26,000 unique responses with more than 17,000 from Canadian suppliers. Our team of public service procurement experts directly engaged with thousands of these suppliers over the past weeks and months. And as a result, we signed 147 contracts, 137 of which were with Canadian suppliers. And this is in addition to contracts realized through other means. Non seulement nous avons obtenu l'accès à l'équipement de protection et aux produits médicaux grâce à l'appel, mais nous avons également élargi notre réseau de fournisseurs. It's always been our plan to return to the use of competitive procurement. So today, right here at the plant in GM, I'm pleased to announce that we are moving away from the call to action to using competitive procurement opportunities where the timeline for delivery permits. Instead of the call out, suppliers who visit our buyandsell.gc.ca website will see opportunities for tenders for COVID-19 supplies along with other goods and services. Suppliers, especially those who are doing business with government, are invited to register to receive tailored emails for the notification of the latest procurement opportunities. We have also launched a supply hub in order to bring together buyers and sellers of PPE across Canada while providing consumer guidance and other information. This announcement by no means signals an end to our procurements. We have recently launched a series of competitive processes, competitive procurements for goods such as non-medical masks and face shields, which have garnered hundreds of bids. We will also be launching additional competitive processes in the coming weeks to assist with the next phase of our response, including for supplies for vaccine preparedness, an issue that we in Canada are focused on for the health and betterment of Canadians. Now, I'd like to turn to our results in terms of our procurements. We have recently updated our latest information on the supplies that we have had procured and received by the Government of Canada. I will just list some of these here. We have received 2.2 N95, 2.2 million N95 masks over the past couple of weeks, 500,000 of which were from 3M. We have also received 149 million surgical masks, with 23 million having arrived in the last week, including 10 million face coverings and masks that will be manufactured right here by GM Canada. In terms of face shields, we've received a total of 25 million, with more than 60% now coming from Canadian manufacturers. Building up our domestic manufacturing capability is crucial. And in terms of medical gowns, we've received a total of 7.7 .7 million gowns overall, one third of which were made right here in Canada. 
We have to continue. We have to be ready for any eventuality. But I'm here today to tell you that we are well on our way. As of this morning, 96 plane loads carrying N95 masks, medical gowns and gloves have landed. That is 18 flights in just the last two weeks. And now to close. As all Canadians can appreciate, our response will continue to evolve and adapt and change as we respond to future scenarios. Our goal is always to ensure that Canada is prepared and Canadians are healthy. Je tiens à dire encore une fois que le gouvernement du Canada apprécie grandement la façon dont notre secteur industriel s'est mobilisé pour aider le Canada à faire face à cette pandémie. Canadian companies like GM Canada have shown us that they can be part of the win-win scenario that we need here in Canada, a solution to keeping Canadians safe during this incredibly difficult time for our economy by keeping the spirit of rapid innovation alive and well right here at home. Through the ingenuity and tenacity of partners in industry, the tireless commitment of our frontline workers, just like you, um, the diligence of Canadians, we will get through this together. Nous nous en sortirons ensemble. So I'd like to echo Minister Baines' shout out to you, three cheers for the workers here at GM Canada and right across Canada in terms of the work you have done to produce PPE. Thank you so much for hosting us here today to mark this incredible milestone. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, tout le monde. We're going to take a couple of questions from the phone and then we'll do questions from the floor. Rapson, please uh, press star one at this time if you have a question. Mr. Deepak, you should read one on the news, Rapson. Your line is open. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, sort of curious at what point Canada might be self sufficient, or do we ever expect to be self sufficient in terms of supplying our own PPE uh, for this pandemic? Uh, thank you uh, very much for that question. Uh, from the beginning, uh, we quickly mobilized Canadian industry by supporting Canadian entrepreneurs, as I said, scientists and innovators to help build up domestic capacity. And that was absolutely essential because international supply chains were a bit unreliable uh, and there was growing demand for this very, very limited personal protective equipment that was being built in other jurisdictions and manufactured in other jurisdictions. And I'm proud to say that today what we acknowledge and announced is the fact that this government was able to work with industry to help mobilize industry in Canada and make sure that we were able to take advantage of those Canadian entrepreneurs to build up domestic capacity and self-sufficiency. And one proof point of that is the purchases that we are making right now are sourced from Canadian companies, represent 40% of the total dollar value when it comes to Procurement Canada and my colleague can speak to that. So we're starting to build up that capacity in critical areas. Uh, clearly, we're not at 100%, and so we still need to rely with and work with our international partners, but I'm proud of the measures that we have taken because building up domestic capacity uh, in this manner and mobilizing Canadian industry has helped save lives, help flatten the curve, and help protect frontline healthcare workers. Thanks, Nav, and I'll just, um say a couple of uh, additional points. Firstly, I want to point your attention to the figure of 44%. 44% of our contracts in terms of dollar value are made right here at home domestically. So that is a shift that we are seeing. That percentage is likely going to increase. As my colleague Minister Baines mentioned, we're not at 100% yet, but we are on an upward trajectory that is very important to note. The next point I would make is that we have to remember that PPE is a very broad term. It includes face coverings, face shields, ma other masks, um, gowns and gloves, shoe coverings, and 
among those individual categories, we are becoming increasingly self-sufficient. So as I mentioned, in the face shield area, over 60% of our face shields are being produced right here at home. So it's important to break down these numbers and to recognize that overall we're on an upward trajectory towards self-sufficiently, and within individual categories, we are also on an upward trajectory. Thanks so much for the question. And uh, my follow-up question for, for uh, both ministers, I'm wondering if you have any concerns with the way the WE uh, contract was handled, particularly with the, the news this week, that the Prime Minister's mother and brother were uh, paid by this organization. Um, uh, thank you very much uh, for your question. Uh, with respect to the specific question around the contract that you were highlighting, as you know, we get advice from our nonpartisan government public service. Uh, we took that recommendation. Uh, clearly, we are going in a different direction right now. But make no mistake, our government and our prime minister is absolutely committed to supporting students, supporting young people. This has been a priority of our government since 2015. And the prime minister himself is very passionate about supporting students and engaging with them and working with them. And he speaks at many events to support them. Uh, and that will continue. Uh, but as you mentioned, with a specific contract, we are going in a different direction. I will just, just add. Go ahead. Oops, sorry. No, Go, that's ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, we have a question now from Crystal O from the Global News. Abu La Parole. Please go ahead. Hi, this question is for both ministers. Um, we just wanted to know, were you informed of the financial connections between the Prime Minister's family and the WE charity when Cabinet considered the WE contract? Uh, so again, uh, with respect to the contract that you're alluding to, uh, any discussions that take place in Cabinet, as you're fully aware of, are subject to Cabinet confidentiality. Uh, as uh, the Prime Minister has mentioned, as Minister Chagger has mentioned, that the nonpartisan advice that we received from the public service was to recommend uh, this particular project. Uh, we decided to go with that project, but in light of the current circumstances, we are now going in a different direction. Uh, and uh, we are absolutely committed to supporting young people and students in particular, and we'll continue to find a way in this crisis to make sure young people get the support that they need. And I might just add. Uh, follow up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, Minister Nan one decision. No, 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 that's okay. I just wanted to mention that this is not something that I have dealt with in the context of my portfolio as Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Uh, it's administered by ESDC. And as Minister Baines mentioned, we are going in a different direction, and our priority remains making sure that the youth of Canada have opportunities during this incredibly difficult time. And on that theme, don't you think Canadians are entitled to know if you or if Cabinet are providing appropriate oversight of the rewarding of a contract of nearly $1 billion? Could you please repeat the question? I apologize. There's some noise here on the side. Don't you think Canadians are entitled to know if you, if Cabinet, are providing appropriate oversight of awarding the contract of nearly $1 billion? Again, thank you very much for the question. And I just want to underscore that I understand the question that you're raising and the perspective that you're coming from, but make no mistake, the directions that we take uh, are really based on the nonpartisan advice that we get from our public servants. They made a very clear recommendation. We followed that recommendation, but we are now uh, in a different position, and we remain committed to helping the students, uh, to remain committed to helping uh, youth in particular that are struggling in this current moment with this current crisis to make sure that we position them to succeed uh, and that remains a priority for our government uh, and that's the approach we're going to continue to take going forward. Thank you. Now we will take questions from the floor. Uh, Brendan Sylvia, CBC News. The Prime Minister said Cabinet approves uh, contracts like the one given to We Charity to administer the student grant program. If you had known his mother, brother, and wife had been paid by We for speaking engagements, would you have supported awarding the contract? And should the Prime Minister have recused himself from those Cabinet discussions on the contract? 
So again, thank you very much uh, for your question. And I understand uh, the points that you're raising and the concerns that you're raising. And we're very mindful of the issues that have been brought to light. But make no mistake, our government's posture and tone when it comes to supporting young people has been very clear. Uh, we want to continue to support young Canadians, uh, particularly during this difficult time, uh, as they are trying to find meaningful opportunities over the summer months. Uh, we work very closely with the public servants, who are nonpartisan, uh, and they provided us with a clear set of recommendations, and we follow those recommendations. And then just a quick follow-up. Um, paramedics in Ottawa say they aren't able to do their jobs because of an N95 mask shortage and that the equipment they need aren't in government stockpiles. Uh, so they've been reassigned to other jobs. Just wondering what you make of that. Well, thanks for the question, and I was actually expecting it, so I appreciate you fulfilling my expectations. Um, I will say that N95 masks have been the subject of high global demand. Having said that, our federal intake of N95s is increasing. Uh, the call out from the paramedics, I believe, was directed to the provincial government. Um, but I would say if the province of Ontario would like to contact us about urgent supply needs, uh, by all means, I am open to receiving that uh, request. We have routinely stepped up to help provinces in need throughout this crisis. Uh, sending swabs to Nunavut, for example, was one of the uh, you know, priorities for me a few months ago, and I will continue to do that, and our government will continue to step up and collaborate with our provinces and territories to make sure Canadian frontline health care workers have exactly what they need. Hi there, Rika Sakali, Oshawa this week. Um, there's been a call from the local MPP here in Oshawa that uh, the government facilitate um, N95 masks being built right here in this largely empty plant. Can you respond to that? Go ahead. Well, thank you very much for the question. And uh, I'm very much familiar with this issue. Uh, my colleague, Ryan Turnbull, uh, has raised this issue with me as well. He understands how important it is to create opportunities uh, for uh, workers locally here. And uh, as I've highlighted, we've mobilized Many companies, uh, many, many different businesses have stepped up in a big way to help uh, manufacture personal protective equipment. And as my colleague Minister Nan mentioned, 44% of the dollar amount that we procure are from made in Canada solutions and sources. And so we're always looking for opportunities, but we're very proud of the fact that we were able to take this meaningful step with GM Canada to help manufacture 10 million face coverings um, and we will continue to endeavor to work with our partners to see additional opportunities going forward. Okay. And then, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that what I was mentioning in my remarks is that our preparation and our work is still continuing in the area of contracting and procurement. That we don't see ourselves as out of a crisis situation and at the current time. We have to be ready for any eventuality, which has been my focus in the short and the long term. And that's why we're moving to competitive bid processes, which anyone will be able to participate in. And then more broadly speaking, many of the workers who, um, who were laid off um, after GM ended auto manufacturing in this very facility uh, are basically in one of the worst job markets that you can imagine right now with COVID-19. And they would love to come back and work in manufacturing in this facility or other facilities here in Durham region. What can you do to help make that happen? Well, thank you very much for asking that question. Uh, just to, to underscore the fact that I'm a big believer of our manufacturing footprint here in Ontario. And we're seeing it on full display with the mobilization efforts that we just highlighted. And I also started my career in the automotive sector. So I know how critical and important this sector is to the local economy, both in terms of the direct jobs that are created, but also many of the indirect jobs that are created. And that is why I'm working very closely with Jerry Diaz from Unifor, uh, and of course with GM as well, and saying, look, we need to work together to find solutions, to bring products, to bring opportunities here. And we're more than willing to sit at the table with the automakers, with the unions, and be part of that solution. We've done so in the past, and we've made significant investments in the automotive sector, 
And make no mistake, coming out of this crisis, and we're still in this crisis, and as we're restarting the economy and talking about an economic recovery, I firmly believe we need to continue to build on the automotive sector because we have the best skilled workforce anywhere. We've received numerous awards when it comes to quality assurances and many of the plans here in Ontario, and that's a point of pride because we have some of the best workers. And we have a long and proud history when it comes to the automotive sector. And I'm confident we can build on that, particularly when it comes to the electrification that's occurring in the automotive sector. There's so many opportunities there in terms of the vehicles that are built that are, will help us achieve our 2030 targets uh, and also help us get to the net zero 2050 targets. And so we want to make sure that we continue to find green solutions. And I'm looking forward to working with the automotive sector and Jerry Diaz, particularly now in the coming months as they're going through their union collective bargaining negotiations. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Over to you, David. With that, I just I want to thank the ministers again for joining with us today. Thank you to the media for uh, doing the, the pool feed for us and working together with our safety uh, requirements here. Um, keep safe, everyone. Thank you very much.